Hey friends, welcome back to another video. My name is Emma Fave, and today I'm gonna to be comparing three affordable beginner watercolor palettes from Amazon. So let's jump in and start. Okay, so the first watercolor palette we are going to be looking at is the Mei Liang Solid Watercolor Palette. Now this brand is affiliated with Paul Rubens and I believe Pretty Excellent. It has the same logo there. Um, I've heard great things about Pretty Excellent, which is kind of like an introductory palette or beginner palette. Um, similar to Paul Rubens. Paul Rubens is the artist grade and I love my Paul Rubens palette. I have both the solid regular watercolors as well as the metallic and this brand new palette has both. So this palette comes with 48 colors that include 12 metallic watercolors which is great and you can see they're kind of shiny which is what I look for in a palette when it looks a bit more chalky. I, I'm not as satisfied. Comes with a water brush and then a swatch card here and then that color reference card above to show you which colors are where. So I'm just going to swatch these for you and kind of tell you my first initial thoughts on them. My first thoughts were that I love the range of colors in this palette. It kind of has all my go-to colors, especially like greens, which I find in a lot of palettes, the greens look a little bit too vibrant and fake-ish, not fake, but <laughs> not as neutral. Um, and it has a really nice olive green and then it's just dark hooker's green, which I really like. Uh, but it has a great variety of colors and on the swatch card, it actually looked really nice. Now I know you need to paint on real watercolor paper to kind of get the feel, which we will do. But at first glance, I was pretty happy. It's a very big palette. So if you want something a little bit more compact, you might want to get the smaller version of this palette without the metallic colors. Um, but it's great because it has huge mixing wells that you can mix all your colors above. It's a nice sturdy package and I really enjoyed it. I also want to mention that the price point of all of these palettes that I'm testing today are very affordable and excellent for beginners and for the quality that I've seen so far with this palette I'm actually quite impressed. Okay so the next palette we're going to look at is this 48 watercolor set by Magic Fly. I have never heard of this brand before but their palette looks similar to the Mei Liang one and I wanted to compare. This one also comes with 10 sheets of watercolor paper and it also comes with a sponge and three water brushes and then this little carrying case which is a nice little added bonus. The palette size same amount of colors, it's slightly smaller than the Mei Liang one and comes with two swatch cards, a white one and a black one, I guess, to swatch the pearlescent metallic colors. So there are only four, five, six, seven, eight, nine metallic colors in this set, um, but all the basics that you would need and they come individually wrapped. So you will have to unwrap them. It's fairly easy. You just take the sticker off and you can put it on the back. But at first glance of the actual watercolors, they didn't look chalky. They looked similar to my Winsor Newton Cotman ones or my Muno palette. So I was curious to see how they would perform. And the variety of colors was okay. Um, there were some colors, again, like I always look at my greens. Greens are kind of what I go for. And they were missing some more neutral greens that I would have really liked. But this the color selection was pretty decent. So initially swatching them, they looked okay. Um, the swatch paper is also not the greatest. Um, they did seem to leave a bit more residue on the actual paper than the other ones, the Mei Liang ones. They didn't feel as transparent. Um, I feel like some parts were a little bit thicker, which I don't usually go for, but I wasn't sure if it was the paper or not. So we will test it on different paper. And then also the paper that it did come with was not very good at all. It came with 10 sheets, but as you can see, it has like this crazy texture to it. And I just was not a fan at all. So at first glance, it looks pretty decent, but I wasn't too fond of the paper and some of the color choices. And I also noticed that once I activated some of these watercolors, 
it just it brought up a lot of paint more than becoming like a transparent medium there was like chunks of paint kind of coming up with it um, which I've experienced with other paints before and it's just not my preference and then our last watercolor set that we are going to be comparing is this Artistro watercolor set. It comes with some watercolor paper also, little loose sheets that you can use as bookmarks, which is really cute. Um, and it comes with 48 colors. There are four neon colors and four metallic colors in this set, which are really cool. Um, a little swatch card. And then it comes with all that stuff above. So it comes with a water brush, a pencil, a little paintbrush, an eraser, a sharpener and a sponge so I don't typically need all this stuff actually I'd rather prefer more mixing wells or any mixing wells you can take that plastic piece out of the top um, and use it as a mixing well it was just kind of like a little bit of a pain to kind of get out though and then you have to find a place to store all the other stuff so I don't really think that those things are necessary and they were quite on the cheaper side so I it just didn't seem like it was necessary to have all that other stuff but if you like that stuff you definitely can and it comes with a swatch card and then a color reference card so at first glance of these paints sorry i'm out of breath <laughs> um they looked a little bit chalky to be quite honest um just the finish of them they seem like they're chalky paints and for me that is usually a sign that i'm not gonna like them some people might like them but it was a sign for me that I'm not really going to like them. And then swatching them, I wasn't too impressed. And I, I wanted to give it the benefit of the doubt that maybe it was just the paper that I was swatching, not swatching it on. Because some swatch cards are just not great to, you know, judge. So like I said, we will be doing comparison paintings after this. But yeah, they looked a little bit on the chalkier side, not as transparent and not as great. I mean, it's it's a shame because there were some decent colors that I really liked. They had some nice greens, which is like my, my go-to judgment. Um, it's cool to have the neon colors and then those metallic colors. Those are really all the metallic colors I would use are like the gold and silvers. Um, so the color selection is nice, but the initial look of the paint wasn't the greatest and the paper actually was quite decent um I was actually surprised it wasn't you know really low quality paper it, like you can make some really cute bookmarks with that paper that it came with so that's a nice little added bonus but overall initial reaction was kind of like meh so like what I've noticed with comparing all three of these palettes just right off the bat is that the Mei Liang one didn't come with like little things here and there like extra water brushes or it came with one but it didn't come with paper it didn't come with a little carrying case but the quality in my mind for a beginner palette outweighs all the extra little kind of cheap <laughs> add-ons but that is just my opinion if you want all those little cute things like an extra eraser or extra brushes or a pencil paper this, the other palettes may be good for you, but for me, I'd rather have better quality watercolors. So we're going to test them out in two different types of paintings to see which one is actually the best. Okay, so for our final comparison test, I wanted to try out some actual paintings because I feel like that's the only way you can really compare. So I decided to use my Academy watercolor paper, which is 100% cotton. I really, really like it and it performs beautifully performs beautifully with my high quality professional watercolors so I wanted to do a landscape piece very very simple and then some of my go-to florals just to see how they perform so I separated the big piece of paper into six sections the first section we are working on right now is with the Meiliang palette um, I wanted to see how the colors blend together how they'll dry how they bleed because ultimately if you have the right paper they should blend and bleed effortlessly. <laughs> Sorry if I'm like fumbling over my words. You know what? This is so hard to do voiceovers when your brain doesn't work. Um, but the ultimate test is to see how it dries. Because once you're painting with it, you can't always tell the quality. But you'll see at the end, there's definitely a difference in quality. So I wanted to blend all these different colors. Um, seeing how the color also lifts. So here I'm creating some clouds with some paper towel, 
I will tell you that when we get to the last palette, I forgot to do this part. I forgot to lift it. And then I just tried it on a separate piece of paper and it lifted fine. Um, they all seem to lift the same, but the blending was definitely different. So the Meiliong is our first one that we are doing here. And yeah, so far so good. So I'm going to let you kind of just watch me do these paintings sped up. Um, so you don't have to sit through the whole thing and then I will show you the results at the end and I think you'll be impressed. Okay, so here are the final dried paintings and we're starting off with Artistro and as you can tell it is very granulated and chalky. So there are some paints that are nice and granulated but I don't think that's what these are meant to be. They are pretty chalky. Magic Fly is a little bit better, the bleeds are a little bit better but still in those like dense saturated areas they're pretty chalky um, and have a lot of residue to them. Both of those paints seem a little bit more granulated. The artist, the Artistro ones, way more so, um, especially compared to the Meiliong one. There's a little bit of granulation there in the sky, but overall, the Meiliong has the best color bleeds and the blends. They're super soft and are more comparable to a better quality paint, in my opinion. Like, look at those soft color bleeds from the green to the pinks. The other ones, you just don't get it as much. Especially like the magic fly, it just seems really harsh in the center of those flowers. Um, I just wasn't impressed with the other two. So overall, I definitely have to say the Mei Liang paints are most worth it for their price. They are the most comparable to higher quality paints and are definitely worth it. They don't come with like all the little bells and whistles of like extra paint brushes and erasers and carrying cases and all that stuff, but I really don't think that matters when it comes to quality of paint. I'd rather as a beginner start with something a bit better than just having those extra things. It is the biggest palette by far. The other ones are a little bit more compact, but again, I think it is definitely worth it when you have a better quality. So those are my final thoughts on these three affordable, Amazon watercolor palettes, and I hope you guys enjoyed the review. Thank you guys so much for watching my video. I really hope you liked it and I hope you learned something. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel and follow me on Instagram for even more. Have a great day guys. Bye.